Eagles Austria, picture postcard location in the Tyrol Mountains to the west of the country. And nestling in those mountains is the Olympic city of Innsbruck. We're just on the mountains above Innsbruck at the track at Eagles in 1964 and 1976. It was a winter Olympic venue, and it's the venue for our second team competition of the season. Delighted to be joined by race winner from the USA, Noel Pikers Pace. Noel, this track, it's so easy to learn to get down, but it's so hard to get down quick. It is. The curves seem to just guide you where you need to go. So there's not a lot of effort needed for this course. Right here, you're seeing it going into curve three. There's just not much you're doing with your sled. With when we're on our skeleton sleds, we're able to drive it with our shoulders and knees. In a bobsled, they have what's called D-rings. So it's not so much like a steering wheel as much as it is pulling and, and putting yourself within an inch or two of where you need to be. Here's the Kreisel corner. This is a full circle. This is where you make or break your speed. This sport is about speed. It's a gravity sport. Um, going into curve eight, and here comes curve nine. This is another very critical point in the track. Like you'll see as the athletes come down, there's not much going on. You won't see a lot of people hitting the walls, but you'll see time bleeding away or people speeding up, and that's what makes this sport so exciting. Um, and here we are coming into this finish curve. We've had a lot of trouble as skeleton athletes going through this curve throughout this week. Well, it's the element after the track finishes that's perhaps the one that focuses most attention because you come flying into this run and there you go, hit the wall and those mats that hopefully stop you relatively safely. Well, the team competition format is very straightforward. All four disciplines are represented, men and women's skeleton, men and women's bobsleigh, and each national team brings one competitor to go into the run. A random draw to start us with men's skeleton, and from there on, it's reverse of the team standing, so the leading team always goes last. And like in every other sliding sport, total time, least elapsed means you are the winners. Well, let's take a look at our teams from Canada. Olympic champion John Montgomery heading up the Canada 2 team. And we have got two strong lineups from Germany as well. Frank Rommel, Sandra Kyriasis, a part of Germany 1. Germany 2, Manny Mahata and friends enjoying a moment of levity. One GB team here. Gangnam style, yikes, that needs some work. Injured Paula Walker means there is no second GB team, and injuries also mean that USA are down to just the one entry. Daily Lana Myers and Lolo Jones, Katie Ulender, Steve Holcomb and Nick Taylor. Again, showgirls they ain't. And the Canadians, wow, Lyndon Rush has changed just a <laughs> he little. Looks a little different. <laughs> There you go. Well, we will see all those guys on ice. And here is the random draw start order now. As I say, we have lost a number of teams. The international team, which is essentially Spanish skeleton and Aussie bobsledders, they have gone. And we have lost four of our 10 potentials. And Noel Pike's pace. We get things underway with the men's skeleton. Now, like everything else we're going to talk about this afternoon, the first 50 meters, the start, is going to be critical for performance. It's absolutely critical, especially on this track. It is everywhere around the world, but on this track, it's such a short track. It's such an easy track that the start is just so important. You're going to see him. He's going to have spikes on the bottom of his shoe, and that's how we're able to grip the ice. Bobsled and skeleton, we have just over 400 spikes on the bottom. You can see him walking down, making yep. sure that groove is good going into curve one. Uh, obviously, somebody has reported some debris on the track, and just as in the Daytona, 500 we don't want stuff in the way likely to be yeah just a little bit of tie wrap or a piece of tape that can be a little distracting as you're standing there at the start all he's wearing is a speed suit you know it's not it's not very insulated obviously so it gets pretty cold up there you try to keep your legs warm and get ready to just blast off that block well, Matt Antoine late replacement for John Daly in the crew luckily the vests are stretchy enough that it still fits him USA 1 get things underway with the man from Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. You can see him pushing in that left groove. That's a little tricky for this track because there's a, there's a left-handed curve coming up. You see him dragging his toe. He's losing some time right there. He does that because he pushes on the left side, and it gets really um, hard for us to load onto our sled if we're pushing in the opposite groove. Matt's still recovering from knee surgery he had during the summer. And, and Noel, you know, sometimes you have to time things to sort your body out for the long term and then deal with the, 
the mental pain of not being able to perform to your best afterwards. Yeah, sometimes the mental game is the most difficult part to overcome from an injury, as most athletes know. Um, here he is coming into one of the most difficult points. You see his leg coming down. Oh, that's a really bad hit. That's going to cost him some time. 98 kilometers an hour is not bad speed compared to what we were seeing earlier on a slightly icier track than in training. 118 kilometers an hour, that's 74 miles an hour. And while we might say occasionally he's not that quick, 74 miles an hour, chin an inch over the ice, head first. Yeah, that's quick enough, right? <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see what the next competitors can, can lay down. 54, 34, let's see what, what comes. All right, so Matt Antoine, two runs already today in the men's skeleton race, and then this final trip down the Eagles track. Here he is coming into curve nine. You see him getting a little too high, trying to hold it on, and he's just too high. His sled comes off, hits that wall. And the reverse angle shows air beneath the sled. Never your friend. Well, this is a gravity sport. Gravity is your friend, and you friction is not. Going for record. <laughs> He, he didn't like that run so much. Yeah, Barrett Viaca there uh, and her teammates cheering on Frank Rommel. Uh, the only man whose name is not Martin Stukors to win in men's skeleton in two seasons. Yeah, it's very impressive. You're going to see it with his form. His form is immaculate. You see his head low, his feet are together. You won't see his feet touching the ice. On a difficult track, you might see us dragging our toes a little bit, but on this track, you should be keeping your feet off the ice and using your shoulders and your knees to steer your way down the course. Now, that was a pretty impressive start. He started 5.17, 5.18 in his two runs in the men's race so shaving a little bit off that here comes the Kreisel it's a full circle has a little bit of height let's see if he can maintain it he stuck it that's great this is good for his speed he's up by 2500 well, he's got a really nice looking run here Noel of course another trip down the track just fine-tuning all of those little steers every time. Yeah, every every curve we're doing something, and we're just trying to put the puzzle together, trying to figure out what to do in each curve to make us a little bit faster and to set us up for the next corner. And he did it. He, he just laid down a great run, 53-48. Wow, that's going to be one to beat. That is a smoking run. But of course, now, normally, on any ice sliding competition, it is just you versus the track. And that's all there is to it. Whatever anybody else does, they do. They can't affect your race. In the team competition, that's completely different. You all rely on each other. You do rely time. on each other, and everybody's saying, you'd better not mess it up. You know, you're at the top, and they're saying, go get it, get, put us ahead so that we don't have to work so hard. So yeah, give us an easy team. ride. Yeah, we love the team competition. What it is fun is, I mean, it's a, it's a very different experience. It's more like when you're training and traveling together rather than when you're competing normally. Yeah, it is. It is. There he is. He's happy with that. So <laughs> Frank Rommel, our race leader, 53-48. Yeah, he could have done with one of those today. He didn't get anywhere close to that in either heat. So, has the track changed then, maybe? As the sun has been out most of the day, maybe it's a little quicker and slicker. Let's see if junior world champion Alexander Krkel from 2011 can give us any further signs. They're a noisy rabble at the top. They are, that's good though. It gets them pumped up, makes them want to push harder off the block. There he goes, you see him swinging his arm, pumping it. It's really uh, difficult for us to learn to sprint bent over like this. It's just not natural for the human body to sprint this way. So we have to do a lot of training over the summer, try and get quicker at the start. We do a lot of track and field workouts. And your fingertips an inch off the ground. Yeah, that's, the, the, the normal sprinters must look at you guys and just shake their heads in amusement. A 5.01 start for Alexander Krakow. That's a very big start indeed. He had a 5.07 and 5.12 in the competition earlier today. You can see his head coming up and down. It's, the track isn't smooth. It's not what you'd think it would be um, maybe on an ice skating rink. It has some bumps through it because they have to shave the ice down. And it's very difficult for us to keep our heads down, keep our form as we're going through the, a track like this where it's kind of bumpy. But he's doing a great job. On 20.3, he's losing speed in the bottom compared to Frank Rommel. He's gone behind from being 1,300s up a quarter second back. Of course, you always want to beat your own teammates, and especially when they're in a different German team. Of course. Sometimes stopping is the most difficult part of our whole run. You can see him being thrown into the side of the wall there. We have foam pads because we don't have brakes. All exactly. we have to do is drag our feet, and hopefully, hopefully we stop quick enough. Okay. A little late exit here, perhaps. Oh, got that one nailed. That's not bad. Yeah, that looks good. Keeps his form nice and tight. Here he is going into Kreisel. He's looking for that exit. 
And there it is, and he's pushing himself out. You can see that right shoulder pushing down, trying to get him out of Kreisel soon enough. So it's head, shoulders, knees, and toes that steer these. Uh, aerodynamics plays a big part in it. Well, we've got Germany one, leading Germany two, and the USA. Next up for Canada again, late substitution, Johnny Fairburn. Eric Nielsen, after surviving the men's race, has gone home to try and warm up or cool down or whatever it is you do with a fever. Uh, the infamous Canadian horns. Coach Loach uh, is uh, giving them the get-go. A 5.19 start for Johnny Fairman. Here he is coming into curve three. You're going to just want to watch. The more that we rise and fall within a curve, that means we're, we might be losing a little bit of time. But there are times when we want to let the sled just run. We want to let the sled go. We don't want to fight those oscillations, those pressures. And you can see him just trying to flow with this track. This track is very, um, you really need to flow with it. It's very rhythmic. And if you don't have that rhythm, then your run is done before it even starts. One of the reasons, perhaps, that you see the athlete's head bouncing so much over these bumps is because you've got to be relaxed. You want to be like a jello on here without fighting the sled. You do, and it's very difficult after you're trying to put yourself into a sprint, a full-on sprint, a 30-meter sprint or so, a 20-meter sprint, and then try to relax your heart rate and, and just get into your form and breathe. Um, it can be very tricky. He's very happy up there. <laughs> I tell you what, if I had to do a 50-meter sprint at the top of the track, I'd be like jello at the top of the sled. I would have nothing left. <laughs> no, maybe it makes it easier for us to <laughs> so John Fairburn, uh, the Canadian team slip into third place. Not overjoyed with that run. What did he do in the competition? Here he is driving off the block, trying to keep his feet as close to that sled as possible. If you drift away, it's easy to throw your sled outside of that little groove and then your run will be done. He stays right nice, tight and low going into entrance of curve one. Very nice. Well, he said 53.96 slides in both runs in the men's race, 54.19. So a couple of attempts back from where he wanted to be. Next up with the number eight is Canada 2's men's skeleton entry, John Montgomery. Now, after struggling with four different sleds in the opening four World Cup races of the season, he brought Montgomery version number four back from Canada with him, and he finally seems to be starting to find some form and some rhythm and certainly nothing wrong with that 5-0-3 start. Nothing wrong at all. I know um, I was just training with him the other day and he, he trains really well. He Just the day of the race he was up lifting and um, doing some potentiation which sometimes we like to do that just to try and warm up our muscles, get them going, try to push off that block as hard as we can. Having a great run. He's ahead by 11 hundredths here, coming into the Kreisel. This is where you can gain a lot of speed if you come out there nice. Come out a little bit left and a little bit late in there. He's going to work really hard in these curves to keep it straight. Oh, and there he goes. He was hung up on the exit of curve nine, and it just pushed him right into that wall. And he's fighting it. He's curve nine him. was his bugbear in the race earlier on today, and it has cost him a quarter of a second and more. Oh, and a hit on the wall in 14. He is in third place. Fat Rommel still leads for Germany. That was a tough run. That was tough. It looked really nice going into the Kreisel, and just on the exit, he missed it a little bit going in late to curve eight, and it kind of threw off the rest of the curves. Well, Monty version four seems to be much more to his liking, even if Eagles isn't. Be looking forward to seeing what he can do in the World Championship track at Sam Moritz, where we've got about twice the ice to play with that we have here. Well, Frank Rommel is our race leader at the moment, and that means that his team, Germany 1, are in front after the men's skeleton leg. Well, next up for Great Britain, Kristen Bromley. Originally, almost every British athlete here was going to be competing. There were two British teams, but uh, Paula Walker's knee, uh, she's, there she is. She has uh, got a bit of a knee twin. She wants to look after before the World Championship, so not having the risk of another run today. Kristen Bromley, though, at the top of the track. This is only the second athlete we've seen pushing in this left side. Left side of the sled and in that left groove. It sets you up poorly for the for, for the entrance of curve one. Um, let's see how he handles it. You can see him turning his head, trying to get in nice and early. He handled it very well. Um, a little bit off, his feet are a little bit apart, but that's kind of his style of driving. Coming into entrance of curve three. It's looking pretty good. He seems to find speed down the track. So let's see what this, see, let's see what his speed is going into Kreisel. 
Well, beginning of the season, he struggled with a hamstring injury, as did Shelley Rudman. They were training in Norway pre-season and both injured their hammies. Then they both had flu since Christmas. So it never rains, but it pours. You know, you recover from one thing and something else comes along. He had a great exit. This should help his speed. Going into the labyrinth, 120.6. He's still down by 29 hundredths. He's just not able to find that speed down the track. It's just too short for him. But again, I would imagine, knowing Kristen and his penchant for development, that he will have tried a different setting or a different set of runners to what he used in the men's race earlier, where he finished in the top six. Because it's all about experimenting. It's all about developing the sled for the goal of the World Championships and then next year's Olympics. That's right. Here he is coming out of Kreisel. He actually had really nice height coming out. You see him falling off a little bit, but that exit was nice and clean. Onto that left side, or it's the right side if you're looking at, left side if you're sliding, going into a good entrance into curve eight. Yeah, he seems happy, you know, right? Well, he had a 53.7 second slide and a 53.94 just now, which is the same as his first slide in the men's race. So whether that's answered question or raised more, who can possibly tell? So all six teams have completed the first leg of four with a remarkable aplomb and Frank Rommel puts Germany one into the lead. I'll tell you what, for everybody, it's probably just as well there is no Latvian women's bobsleigh team. That <laughs> might make things very tricky indeed. He had such a great run. You can see his coach giving the thumbs up. He's happy with it. I'm sure his team is as well. I'm sure the bobsledders are like, yes, awesome, we're ahead. Absolutely. Going into this. So Germany one leads Germany two, GB in third ahead of the Canadians and the USA need to find a little something in the next heat and that will be women's bobsleigh. Or do we have time before the uh, before the uh... Wir sind gespannt, ob wir morgen so einige Beinbrüche erleben, wie wir die Zeit zusammen sind, auch für uns. 
Eagles Austria for the second team competition of the bobsleigh and skeleton World Cup season. And after the men's skeleton competition, we go in reverse order of their standings, which means the USA go first. Germany won the current leaders, will be the sixth and final women's bobsleigh group. One of each of the four sliding disciplines, men and women's skeleton, men and women's bobsleigh. And to talk us through the bobsleigh, I'm joined by US pilot Nick Cunningham. Uh, Alana Myers with Lolo Jones on the back. In, is that Lolo on the back of the sled? That's definitely Lolo. You, can, you can tell by the yeah, red I can ball. see the band down there. The there we ball. go. And this is actually Alana's first time yeah, in this sled. She's actually sliding in, in Holcomb's original sled, uh, just doing a little testing now that we have the, the BMW sled, and she's going to test this one out. She's actually doing very, very well. It can, sometimes can wear on a pilot when, when they're in a new sled, especially in under race conditions, but what better way to test a sled than, than under race conditions? Yeah, absolutely. And in fun race conditions as exactly. well, where there's not really quite so much at stake. 564, a good getaway from them. She's actually driving the sled very, very well. You, you, good thing about the... Oh, Yikes, got that. hung up a little. A little, little late there. She uh, hopefully will we'll get it back here and, and eliminate the skid, which that, that's just killing time right now. She just needs to kind of hold together. But of course now she drives the two-man Bodine as well. How much different is this likely to feel? And how soon is she going to be able to get on top of that? Um, it's every sled, even though they're all Bodines, they're all a little bit different how we want steering, how we how we have the kind of traction. And, and it, it just kind of will take you mentally out of your game. Uh, when when you jump into a new sled, especially when when the pressure is, is is under race conditions Yeah, she's had no chance to train with it and get used to it It's just get down get fast if you can and if you suddenly feel it steers a different way You've got to react very quickly right? very quickly. So right yeah, here you'll, Martin, I'm with the... you'll, you'll see her dip down too fast and then and and you Matt lose that one. pressure at the end and that just brings her right back up Oh, well, let's Let's catch up with our U.S. team, Matt Antoine, who uh, anchored it for the skeleton, is down at the finish area Matt, with John Morgan. Matt, this team competition is a little different format than you guys are used to. Yeah, it's a little different. It's kind of nice to race with the bobsledders, uh, and it just gives us extra runs, too, and for some people, redemption. Clearly not for me today, though, so. Good luck. Hang in there. The USA have now completed their second run. This is Olympic champion Kaylee Humphreys for Canada One team. And their starting athlete was John Fairburn. She's got Emily Badswick on the back of the sled. And again, in a competition like this, Nick, it'll be a different break woman who breaked in the women's race yesterday just to give everybody a little chance Mix it up just a little bit, kind of give everyone a shot. And, and kind of, it, it's, that's the beauty of this whole team event is that it is, it is a lot of fun. See if she can keep it straight right here, and she does. And, and she is separating herself from the field. She, she knows that she's one of the best uh, in the game right now, and she's really letting us know with, with her results. And, and this is just another trip for her to get down the track, practice a little bit, and she's, she's going to take this one quite, quite well with 2,600 oh. up. All right. John Fairburn there in the uh, Canadian team. Matt Antoine moves out of the leader's box as Canada won move ahead of the USA. And it's oh. nice because Kaylee's been she's been sliding with with uh, Chelsea Vola. Yeah, Chelsea, yeah. And, and she's been doing a great job. And this is kind of a, a great opportunity for for Emily to get in the back of the sled and really kind of you know show her stuff during race day. Yeah, race one, break woman, and train another or get another one into a race. Keeps everybody on their toes and nice and happy. See Chelsea helping out with the sled at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this is, it's a fun event for every team. It's, it's a big family at the top, and and you'll see everyone kind of helping each other. Well, two Canadian teams, so two Canadian women, break women, being alternated. Emily Badsvik raced with Jen Cacchetti yesterday, and she's on the back of Kaylee's sled, and that means that Emma O'Brien is now on the back of the sled with Jennifer and John Montgomery from Canada 2 with John Morgan in the leader's box. Hey, uh, Johnny, you got the Canadians coming down. This is your team. You're running up against the other Canadian team over there. I mean, what is that? Well, we just like to keep it close in Canada. We like to do things together. We didn't want to get too far apart on that first heat. Well, good luck. A lot of Canadian involvement here today. Indeed. We can try to get it all done, all, all the whole crew. Giving almost everybody who is here sliding with uh, another opportunity to compete. 5.7 was that, or 5.07? 5.70 start. She's doing great. She's really keeping that velocity down with curves one, two, and three. She can just keep it straight here, keep that momentum going. She's already a tenth up. Pretty tricky right here coming down into Kreisel. 
This is where a lot of you can skid through here a little bit, and it really kind of scrubs a lot of time because Kreisel is a very flat curve. Right here, you got to keep it straight again. It's a track that a lot of drivers learn to drive on. It's straightforward to get down there, but that means that if you want to be quicker than someone, you've got to be so precise. Exactly. It's, it's, it's easy to get down, but it's hard to get down fast. So, so it's one of those that can really wear on a, on a pilot, especially when you're dealing with hundreds of a second. 2800 oh, behind Kelly Humphreys. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you saw the turnaround there, 1500s advantage from the first heat when she loaded into the sled, and that has turned into a near three tenths of a second disadvantage. 54-8-4 slide for Jennifer. You can see that she had a, a, a really good trip. It wasn't that bad of a trip, but that's how this track is. You know, little things that you really can't see is going to really kind of ruin your, your momentum down the track. Well, how different is it today to how it was in training with the humid, warmer temperatures and the snow and everything? Um, it, it is a little bit slicker for us. You know, a lot of sleds were kind of coming, especially at a curve nine down in 10. Uh, you'll see them a lot more tapping that wall and getting a little skittish. Um, you just have to finish your drive, so you got to kind of see that and recognize it and kind of really just do what you do. You can't really let it affect you. I'm Martin Haven. Alongside me is Nick Cunningham from the USA, who was racing in the men's bobsleigh race a little earlier. Vicky Olay on the GB sled, and she's got Lucy Onyeforo behind her. This is Lucy's first start ever in a World Cup competition of any make. So, welcome, Lucy. A little bit of a stumbling hit there. She didn't look like she quite got the drive she wanted, the brake woman. I think she was looking at the, the scoreboard to see if she can see her time. Okay, rookie error, maybe. Well, they loaded nice and neatly. Let's see what Vicky's got here. Well, John's got Olympic champion Kaylee Humphreys in the booth. Kaylee, uh, you know, you pretty good run down the track. And it was that just like one of the... World Cup uh, races here? Um, well, my focus second run yesterday, I kind of messed it out of Kreisel. So today, really focused on Kreisel, got that a lot better. So I'm really happy with that. But I definitely made a big mistake out of 10. And so um, hit and, yeah, not as good as yesterday. Uh -huh. Well, Vicky Ole had a two tenths of a second advantage at the start, but has not managed to hold on to that. Trying to stay in front of the Olympic champion in the sort of form that Kaylee Humphreys is in is not easy for anybody, as has been consistently proved in World Cup racing. So good slide, 55.1 for Vicky. That's not bad. You know, she's getting her feet wet, kind of, kind of getting against the, the best in the world, and it's, it's actually kind of cool to see where you stack up. Um, she's really kind of, you see that? The sled kind of come up and out. You see the articulation kind of moving around. So that's definitely going to hurt a little bit. You got to take a little bit off, especially when you're dealing with hundreds of a second uh, down the track. Well, she made her World Cup debut in Samaritz last year. And she's made two further World Cup starts this year, been racing in Europa Cup as well. And the British team confirmed yesterday that they have now scored enough points to have all three British women in the World Championships ahead of the Russians. So a big step forward for British women's bobsledding. Next up, big step forward perhaps for Anja Schneiderheinzer of Germany. She's in the Germany 2 crew. And behind her, Sarah Noll. And again, I think I might be right in saying this is the first ever World Cup start for new break woman Sarah. Great start. She's really kind of, you know, stepping it up. And, and the, the Germans are just known for being just good at what they do. And they're going to come through here. You'll see the sled's nice and around. You won't see the, it oscillating up and down the curves. You won't see her trying to fight it. She's really letting the sled fly. And, and that's really why she is almost four tenths up. Well, 574 start for Schneider Heinzer. So 579 for Vicky Olay of Great Britain. And her break woman, Lucy, is actually a very respectable start, considering they didn't have a great hit at all. To be that close to Schneider Heinzer is always good news. Bleeding a little bit of time. You can see her skid right there down into 10. You know, that, that really, hopefully, she has enough in the bank that she can hang on to. But she's, she's definitely a little bit late here. Actually, pretty good. She's coming around and just enough to hang on. So, so even though the trip looked great, you can see that small little errors just bleed speed down the track, especially when it is so short and, and kind of flat of a track. 54-63 slide. And as you said, you know, a couple of little mistakes. Exit of Kreisel, exit of corner nine are just, you know, two of the real key areas. Mm -hmm. It's is as she's coming around here, you see her coming around Kreisel. 
and this is one where you have to kind of catch your pressure a little bit early to steer off and you do not want to skid or hit in here because that's going to either put you super early and put your nose down or it's going to put you late down in, into uh, into eight and, and that's really going to mess up your entrance into nine and that's another one of our curves that you have to get just right down to ten. Kathleen Martini's at the top cheering on her teammate Sandra Kiriasis. John Morgan is with Frank Rommel, the current first round leader. Frank, so you got a German team coming down, your teammates. Do you, how do you root against them in this team competition? Yeah, I hope they're really motivated now. I had a really nice and smooth run, and uh, we work good together, and uh, always looking forward to the team competition, and uh, we're excited now. So uh, you're betting her and Kathleen against the Anya? Yeah, I hope we do better. <laughs> we'll see. Good luck. Thank you. So the Kyriasis gets underway in the women's competition with Berit Viaka. I thought we saw Berit on the sideline. She is down on the entry list. No, it's Janina Tisha. So almost every name on our entry list from an hour ago has changed. It's Janina Tisha on the back of the Germany one sled. Kyriasis sprung a real surprise last week on Kaylee Humphreys by claiming victory by a hundredth of a second in Koenigsegg. Can, look at these win. lines. She's, you can tell that she's just, she's she's a complete veteran of the sport. She's really letting the sled fly around these corners. She's not steering. And right there, just taking it off a nine, right, nice and easy, right around 10. You want to get the nice early entrance into these labyrinths. She's doing such a great job, just picking up the speed, just taking it all the way around. My memory being what it is, it wasn't Koenigsegg, it was yesterday. It was yesterday. It? She beat her by a hundredth of a second, and the Germans have a half second and change lead. So that was another good run from Sandra Kiriasis. What did she set? A 54 22 slide. It's a really strong run. She's having a good weekend. Ended a near two year drought of victories by winning yesterday. And she gets a good run in with Janina Tisha behind her. Not for nothing has she been the number one women's bobsleigh champion for about the last decade. And there she is. So, oh, what? The free biscuits that you get with a cup of coffee in the cafe? Wow, coach, you shouldn't have gone to all that expense. That's good. It's live and a little motivation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they are nice little free bickies, I suppose. Coaches don't have a huge amount of money. So, Germany lead the competition then. Let's take a look after the halfway mark. Germany one ahead of Germany two by six tenths. Canada one move up to third ahead of the USA, who are fourth. Canada's two in fifth, and GB slide from third to sixth place. Right, time to change it all around as we go back to skeleton and we'll have the women's skeleton sliders next for each of our six teams before rounding things out with the two-man bobsleigh leg. Halfway through the team competition, the Germans have a stranglehold, but as always in sliding, nothing remains constant. We'll be back with more.
Top of the track, Eagles Austria, halfway through the team's competition. We've had men's skeleton and women's bobsleigh. Next up, women's skeleton and the two-man bobsleigh to round it out. I'm Martin Haven, and alongside me is my third broadcast partner in this team competition, Melissa Hollingsworth of Canada, to talk us through the women's skeleton race. Six teams here, and of course, Melissa, this is a fun event, but still... You put the helmet on, you can't take too much of the competition away, right? And it's a completely different energy when you are racing as a team and relying on one another. A lot of different people are up at the top of the track, and it's a real fun energy, that's for sure. It is fun event. Donna Crichton gets things underway. Great Britain third after the first heat, slipped down to sixth position after heat two. Now with the women's skeleton, Donna Crichton gets away in a 5.42 start. Donna's one of the strongest starters in the women's field. Well, yesterday our group was quite sticky being at a 9 a.m. start, but now with the 3.30, 4 o'clock start, we're going to see some faster times in this afternoon than what we do in the actual race. And of course, unlike race day, you've already had a taste of this slick ice because it wasn't like this in training. Yeah, so now they have two races with two completely different uh, ice conditions. Nice smooth looking run from Donna Crichton. It's a little height there, a little late, but corrected on the exit. You can see there's snow on the track. It is not snowing, but it is very windy outside. So it's blowing all the snow off the roofs of the corners. And that's going to create a little bit of skidding problems for some of the sliders. Well, adding to our snow problems during the afternoons in training, they had all the snow blowers on on the hillside and the wind was just gusting that across as if there wasn't enough. And a bit of a Superman pose there as Donna tries to protect her shoulder and head. She comes flying into the breaking straight. And there you can see the TV team. Kristen Bromley, who started. Vicky Ole and Lucy Onye Ford, who were the women's bobsleigh leg. Donna Crichton will join them in the leader's box momentarily. She has so much power. You can see that is just spraying off her spikes. There is Donna. Leave the sled to someone else and go and join the leaders because next up is Canada 2. Cassie Haresh will be doing this third leg for Canada 2. She's liking the black visor. I wonder how dark it has to go before she goes clear. Cassie gets pretty fired up at the top of the track. This is her first year on the World Cup. She is a rookie. Everywhere she goes, she's pretty much learning the tracks for the first time. She loves this type of energy. She's a former track and field athlete from Manitoba. Um, and she's been having problems with her starts the last couple of races. So she's going to be looking for some confidence here. A 5.63, that's almost two tenths faster than what she was doing race day. Nice smooth getaway for her. Smooth as silk is John Morgan as well. He's caught up with Kristen Bromley of Great Britain. You guys are sitting here in the leader's box. A uh, little different format, the team competition, huh? Yeah, it's a lot of fun, you know. Um, brings a different element to it when you're racing with the, with the bobsleigh teams. And yeah, absolutely fantastic, enjoying it. Good luck. Great Britain leading at the moment. It's the first time that Britain have had a team in a team's competition in a couple of seasons. Two hundredths of a second, Canada creep in front. It's very impressive because Cassie was two tenths behind Donna at the top of the track, and for easy math, one tenth at the top means two tenths at the bottom, so Cassie is having an amazing run. Two team boxes, you can see the Canadians on top, John Montgomery, Jenny Cacchetti, and Katie as well, applauding their teammate as she moves them into the lead. Twenty-two hundreds in front of Team Great Britain. <laughs> she is a happy bunny. She's always happy. Yes, a great teammate to have. <laughs> always lots of entertainment for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, that's how she's posted. She is the fun element for the team. Great line through nine. Low line. She's staying, keeping the sled off the wall, taking the path most traveled so that she's not going through that little dust of snow. 
nice literary reference from Melissa Hollingsworth alongside me as we watch Katie Ulander of the USA. USA in six pots. Uh, disappointment from Matt Antoine after his run. And they pulled themselves up into fourth place after the women's bobsleigh, courtesy of Alana Mars and Lolo Jones. And our World Cup champion, Katie Ulander, uh, will get their race underway with a 5.52, trying to put them back in to contention. And John Morgan's caught up with Lolo Jones down at the bottom. Lolo, uh, your experience in bobsled in your first team competition, pretty different, huh? It's definitely different, but I kind of um, think it's similar to the like a 4x1 or 4x4 for uh, uh, a track and field event. So it's, it's different, but I kind of like it because it's a whole relay atmosphere. Good attitude, thank you. Good luck. I said World Cup champion, I mean women's skeleton world champion, Kaylee, Katie Ulander. And yeah, I mean, Lolo Jones has got a, a good point, you know, for a track and field athlete going into those relay races, suddenly it stops being about you and it's the group that wins or loses. It is, and knowing what times have been placed before you, sometimes you can get in the mind frame of, I have to do this instead of want to do this, and that can really shake things up at the competition. Well, she stays in front, a 55-28 slide from Katie Ulander. You see Lolo there on the right, Alana Myers in the centre, Matt Antoine on the left, and Katie will join them in the leader's box. It was a great run for Katie. She's on. Um, she uses quite a few of the same equipment as what Cassie does. So even though they're different countries, they talk quite a bit together, uh, trying to figure things out. We only have the six runs down the track to prepare for every World Cup race. So any little bit of information helps, especially if you're sliding on the same equipment. Bit of a skid coming out, but she stays on that right hand side. You can see she goes through some snow. Fortunately, it's just that light dust. It wouldn't slow her down too much. Joins her teammates in the leaders' box. John Morgan down there as well as we get ready now with John uh, with Sarah Rigg with John Fairman. Uh, John Fairman did the start leg for Canada 1, Kaylee Humphreys, Emily Badsvik, the women's bobsleigh and now Sarah Reed for Canada 1. You can see that sticker on the bottom of her sled it says celebrate Sarah that's in honor of Sarah Burke one of our Canadian snowboarders that um, actually she died a year ago today and so that was something that was really spiritual for oh, Sarah yeah, today to be in this team race honor that sticker and remember somebody who's an amazing athlete 545 getaway for Sarah Great start for Sarah. It's faster than her race start, as we expected with the faster group. She's worked so hard over the last 10 years of her career to just be this quiet, calm slider. And she got this Bromley sled this season, and she has been rocketing. She's been on the podium three times this season. Well, nice slide out of Kreisel. Let's catch up. All right, and we're going to catch up with John Morgan. Uh, we'll blow that out. She's 33 hundreds up. Of course, this is now looking at trying to challenge the lead does the two German teams that lie in front. She got corner 10 right down the pipe. Two runs yesterday. She had problems on either side of, of that corner. There you go. What a nice looking slide. 55-2-0 for Sarah Reed. 800s of a second quicker than Katie Ulender just adds a fraction more to the advantage over Team USA. They're now 3400s up. So the battle is, <laughs> is <laughs> it's those mats. It's really tough, and especially because we're going right after a bobsleigh race. They're stuck to the ice right now, and we're just shooting over top of them. Smooth load for Sarah. You can see her eyes, that focal point right ahead of her going into corner one. So two teams remain in this third of four legs in the team competition here at Eagles Austria. Marion Thies will compete in the women's skeleton leg for Team Germany 2. See the hands stitching on the side of the vest. All these vests come in a standard size to fit all sizes, for which read huge people. And then if you're not huge, you tighten them up with the stitching to stop them flapping around. Let's catch up with John Morgan. He's with Canada's Sarah Reed. Sarah, you were just picked the Canadian team to lead. Do you think you had a good run? It was a pretty good run, yeah. I um, had a small mistake out of Kreisel going in eight, but um, overall I was happy with my push and happy with my run. Keep it up. Marion T starts 5.85. 
And of all the tracks that Marion comes to, she must come down the road into Eagles knowing she's just going to have to suck it up and take the punishment. It doesn't play to her strengths. Not at all. It's too short of a track and she's too far at, behind at the start, but doesn't eliminate the fact that watch her lines, watch her style on the sled, and you can learn so much from her. She is the reigning World Cup leader right now, heading into World Championships, so she's a very, very talented slider. Going through a little dusty of snow, it's all blowing off the roofs and the trees here, still in the red. And she's gone from 1,200s behind. The Canadians will stay in the leader's box. Anna Schneider, Heinz, Alex Krakel there, waving goodbye. Oh, wait, we're chopping. <laughs> and the Canadians will now have to jump into a different box as they stay in the lead. And Germany, too, slipped not even into second. They slipped down to fourth with one to go. That wasn't a great run for Marion. She was skidding around just a little bit. You, you can have a look at her start. You want to be efficient, have lots of ground contact, because you are pushing a sled on ice. Extension is key. She comes out of Kreisel, has good height, but she skids just a little bit off that corner. And that's going to be not to her advantage. Well, she'll be glad that that turned up in a team competition rather than in the main World Cup race. She had enough of a struggle there as it is. She still retains the World Cup lead. Anja Huber of Germany, though. Well, this is her chance to keep the Germans in the lead over the Canadian team that give chase. Germany won the final women's skeleton slide of this third leg. And Frank Rommel, her teammate, is at the bottom with John Morgan as Anya Huber kicks off. Well, Frank, how much pressure do you think Anya's got on her? She's no pressure. She just has to uh, do a good run, and I think she does it. It's easy to say that about a former world champion. Good luck. No pressure at all. She just has to win for us. <laughs> that's, that's what he's thinking. The words came out a little more mellow. <laughs> he's pretty much saying, if you lose three quarters of a second on this track, uh, we're going to face watch you in this now. <laughs> yeah. No pressure. It is on you. Well, she's already lost two tenths of a second of her initial eight tenths advantage over the Canadians, but that was potentially just a start deficit to Sarah Reed. And now, oh, well, don't want to be too much of a pinball wizard down here, or a lot more of that will go. Yeah, I think she has this one in the bank for sure. Well, it was a great second leg from Sandra Kiriasis, added to Frank Rommel's first round lead, and a fifth rank slide, but Germany won still in the lead by half a second. Trying to figure out on my bit of paper where I need to write all this down. It's just a jumble of words and scribble at the moment. Nevertheless, Anya Huber is the race leader, and Germany won uh, the race leading team, rather. Fastest slide in that competition, though. It was a Sarah Reed. Yeah, it was Sarah Reed. So she's really hauled the Canadians up the order. Yes, and she's earned 500 euros because the fastest time of every discipline wins 500 euros. So that's the incentive for the best athletes to come out and compete in this team competition. Now, if only we were close to the Canadian Hotel and we knew where the bar was tonight, John Morgan and I would be very happy. But oh, we can in a minute. Hey. Well, a good run from Sarah Reed of Canada to bring them right up into contention. But it is Anya Huber's Germany One team that lead overall, and she is with John Morgan. Well, confirmation there of the standings. Germany won ahead of Canada one, but the gap has come down to a manageable proportion. It will come down to whose men's bobsledders come out on top. USA from sixth after the first leg up to third position. And Great Britain pinning up the bottom of the table in sixth spot. So the final discipline of four still to come. The two-man bobsled will round out this team's competition here in Eagles Austria. Stay with us to find out if the Germans can stay on top or if the resurgent Canadian team can overhaul them on the final run.
Teams competition here in Eagles in Austria. We're into the fourth leg after men's skeleton and women's bob. We've had women's skeleton, and now to decide it all, it will be the two man bobsleigh competition. Random draw for the first run, and then for remaining three, you go in reverse order of your performance, leaving the leaders last to go. And the total time elapsed will decide where you finish. So, sixth after the three first disciplines, Team Great Britain. And that means their men's two-man sled goes first. Lamin Dean at the top of the track with Jim Galvin joining him on the back handles. And if I remember correctly, had his first training run in the final day of training on the back of uh, GB sled. So still trying to find his feet. Well, I'm joined in the booth by Nick Cunningham, but down at the finish line, we've got John Morgan with Donna Crichton. To say, Donna, you're down here, you're rooting for the bobsled team. A little different format, the team, huh? Yeah, it's great fun. All having a good laugh together and enjoying it. It's good. Hey, it's nice to have a little laugh out here in the sliding sports. Good luck. Well, if you can't have fun doing this, I don't know, there's something definitely wrong with you. Skeleton or bobsleigh, it's all adrenaline. Nick Cunningham, 5.39 start for the British team. Now, where are the key areas? given that the start is one of those on this track. Uh, you just got to make sure to keep it straight. You got to really not overdrive the sled. You, you can see him getting a little height, drop out, get against that right wall. And now you're just hopefully going to keep it straight down here into Kreisel, which he does. And, and so, I mean, he's going to carry his momentum down and, and, and not bleed so much back. He's just a little bit early on the, on the eight there. You see him kind of just fly up, fly out here. Keep his, that skid just... It's just small little things. It's just finishing those steers. And, and, and I mean, it's one of those things that just kind of comes with, with trips and, and, and kind of figuring it out and figuring out the sled and, and not letting the pressure get to you. And he's actually doing a great job for, for one of his first times. There we go, top six. Yay, top six finish. Pete Gunn always puts a good spin on things. <laughs> Nicely done. And for Brakeman, Jim Galvin, one of the most difficult parts of this track for the brake man is judging when to get the brakes on because it is such a difficult outrun. Mm -hmm. It's a hard right hand and a hard left hand corner. It is. It's it's one of those ones where where it's we actually have a curve in the braking stretch. So you when you come through the finish line, you have to sit up, brake, go back down, go around that, that right hand curve, and then you have to hit the brakes again while you're flying against the wall. If you don't do it right, you can actually crash and flip over in in the outrun. Yeah. So Great Britain lead, and in fifth place is Germany 2. Manuel Mahata is the driver of the Germany 2 sled, and Axel Christ on the back. And again, Axel, I think, 
getting his first ever World Cup run out. And so this is one of the great things about the team competition, Nick. For the drivers, you get another run, but you can alternate your brake women and brake women and brake men, keep them fresh, get new guys in, give them a race. Exactly. It really kind of is, is fun for all of us and, and motivating for those guys that aren't getting every single rep. And this is their time to really kind of show it. And, and Mahat is one of the best drivers in the world. He just hands down. He's, he's great at what he does. And, you know, he didn't have the best finish today. So this is just a great time to kind of put that behind him, get another run down and, and really kind of clean things up. The start time, 5.39, the same as the British pair, Lamindine and Jim Galvin. So he started off 1,700s up, and he has added to that. And, of course, he's got uh, five, six years more experience driving than uh, Lamindine, who started his career as a brakeman. And that's showing he's got neat, tidy exits, not too much extra work going exactly. on. Exactly. He, he's letting the sled do most of the work, and, and that's really the key of, of going fast on this track, is you, you have to drive, but you don't want to drive too much. It's kind of a... A weird thing to say, but you gotta let the sled fly, and, and the more you drive, the slower you're actually gonna go. And so that was great for Mahata to kind of put the race behind him and really kind of finish with with a great, great trip. Nice run, 53-55 slide puts Germany two in front of Great Britain. You saw the GB team watching on as Mahata stretched his legs on this track. Plenty of height there, and that's absolutely important to get the exit right, to use that, that drop to give you the speed. Exactly. you got to think of how flat of a track it is. got to actually take that height when you can, because it's actually the, one of the only downhill parts. Well, next up, we have got Canada 2. And uh, this is guesswork. We're guessing... Justin Cripps. That is definitely Justin Cripps, which is, he, he's a great competitor, a great guy. Uh, we were in the Olympics together and we started driving together, so it's just really fun to kind of have him around. Uh, we're always trying to compete with each other and always race and, and, and just a great, great competitor. Chris Spring in the background, one of his former teammates, uh, one of his teammates, Graham Rinholm, on the back of the Canada 2 sled. Great to see him back in really strong form after that Altenburg crash just over a year ago. 521 getaway now. That immediately takes 1800s out of Mahata. That's a great start. That's a great start. You got to think that he j was just racing a few hours ago. And so he's going to kind of take that. And he's also a new pilot to this track. And he's really, you know, using this as, as more of a learning experience. And he's, he's keeping it straight, finishing his drives, coming around Chrysler really, really nice. Not really getting that oscillation. Little, little late there. But he's, uh, he's going to bring it around here. This will be a big key to if you can keep this straight. They'll kind of put him a little bit late down at 10. And just kind of want to get that early height down to the, the labyrinths. And he's, he's actually doing a great job. It's, it's almost like the pressure is off when, when you're in this team event. It's, yeah. You know, you get to have a lot of fun. And, and when you're having fun, it's... I've had my best drives in the team event just because it's, it's just a great atmosphere. Well, it, it, as you say, it takes the pressure off. And in any sport, relaxation allows mm -hmm. your unconscious to do it better. Exactly. Otherwise, you're fighting. You're trying to control it and it never works. Ever. It's, never it's, works. You, can't, you can't put the pressure on yourself. When you get in the sled and, and you have to do things, it's, it's just not going to work out the way you want. Cripps is a great, great pushing pilot. He's a... Uh, I mean, hands down, one of the best in the world, and his, his push times definitely show it. You see that power in the, in the sled. We know from, from many, many years, great brake men who have converted onto the front handles and learned to drive have had an advantage, and mm -hmm. Cripps is in that position. Wow, Graham, don't, really don't recognize him without the hair and the uh, Movember tash there. Next up for the USA is Stephen Holcomb, and he has got, uh, but yes, it is, with Nick Taylor behind him. He has got the BMW sled back out. Inconclusive day today for this sled, predominantly because he put it into the first corner. Unfamiliar with getting into it at speed is part of the problem. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's what better conditions to test a sled than on race day when, when everything across the field is very... Very close yeah. when it when it comes down to the sleds and everything, and, and you got Nick Taylor who, who's a great a great brakeman. He's a, a rookie this year. He was he was last year, but this is his first time being on the World Cup. He was actually my roommate in college, so it's great to have him out here. And and Holcomb is going to take the sled around and, and really kind of just get as much data as we can. Slightly different look to the sled. Of course, everybody's wind tunnel does the same things, but you can ask it different questions and come up with different answers. And that's what seems to have happened with the aero work on this BMW 2 man. It's the first year of this program for US Bob Sled with BMW's cooperation. 
testing it back to back. Let's see what he gets down the bottom, as he was in the 122s in the uh, race. 123, I think that might be the best speed he's had out of the sled, but still not quite a match for uh, yours and Corey Butner's speeds. Corey had some of the fastest speeds at the bottom of the track in the two-man race. And again, hauling on those brakes. Yeah, those brakes, it's, it's, yeah. it's very, very tricky. And if you don't get it just right, that's exactly what's gonna happen. You're gonna fly up, especially now after a race, it's completely dug out. You know, all the sleds are, are hitting that wall at the exact same place. So, so the ice is just disappearing sled after sled. And tomorrow you'll see, see it even worse in the format as we're going a little bit faster and a lot more weight to slow mm -hmm. down. Really good line out of Kreisel into eight. Long run up the in run. And again, a little bit more data added to the equation. Next up, Lyndon Rush with Jesse Lumsden. Jesse joined me in the booth a little earlier. Kurt thomas that you saw behind Stephen Holcomb. Uh, calling the action yesterday as well with us. So our third bobsled athlete of the weekend with Nick Cunningham alongside me. And this for a chance, perhaps, to overhaul the Germans. This is a really great team. I mean, Jesse is, is one of the best brakemen in the world. He's really going to get in. really powerful, really good with velocity. And that's really what you want, especially on a short track like this. 5.20 gets away. That is the fastest start we've had so far. Crips and Graham Rimholm, 5.21. So you can see that the, the bragging rights are hard yeah, earned in these teams. It's, it's, it's great, especially as a coaching staff, when you have two teams that, that, that your pilots are, are really kind of contributing to that push. That The times of the, the brakemen really doing all the work, those, those times have gone. You know, you need to have your pilot really be, be an athlete and be up there. And a lot of these crews, sometimes the pilot's one of the better athletes on the team. Well, he's losing a little time to Stephen Holcomb. Hulk is with John Morgan. John, how did he feel the BMW sled went? I don't know if you were hearing that. I uh, was having a lip read that and whoa, nearly rolling that Canada sled. Yikes. Well, a 53.12 run. <laughs> yeah, it was close. Really powerful. You see those, you see those runners almost coming out of the grooves. Good hit. You can see Chris Spring and a whole bunch of Canadian brake men watching the top. And, and the iPad, you know, has a sort of, uh, and, and video cameras, cheap video cameras have revolutionized, especially your start technique, because you can sit like a, an NFL athlete does and watch film exactly. and, and rehearse and think in your mind, how are we going to tidy this up? Yeah, we did that today, and I had my, my, my guys gave me a cell phone, and it, it looked like I had my cell phone in my That's in my, what we yeah. saw afterwards, yeah. And so I was actually I thought watching you were my just run. on Twitter again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so our final run. And this to win, lose, or draw for junior two and four man world champion Francesco Friedrich with his number one choice starting brakeman, Gino Gerhardi. He's not wow. leaving him on the bench, he's leaving nothing behind. 5 13. That's an awesome start. We've just seen the 5 20 and thought that was impressive. Wow, six tenths up. That's a big advantage, and he's adding he's to adding. that. He, yeah, that shows that the velocity was great. And, and he is one of the best pilots in the world. Little off there, so that's, it, it shouldn't kill him too much. See his exit here of Kreisel. Yeah, right down the pipe. That's exactly what you want to see. Eight down here to nine. You want to get that late height. Bring it around. No skid. And then get that height right there. And it's going to bring him right down the labyrinth. Well, up against teammates like Thomas Florschitz and Manuel Mahata, he is equal, if not better, to the challenge of beating them. He's already a race winner. He's only done three World Cup races, and he now wins his first ever World Cup teams competition as well. Junior world champion in two and four man. He could be worth a little flutter for Sam Moritz oh, and yeah. the senior world championship titles because he has got it in spade. I mean, just, you know, look at him. He's 20 years old. He's still developing as an athlete and as a driver. 
he he's already put himself out there that he is he's the guy to beat and, and that's kind of it's fun when he's another one of those great pushing pilots at such a young age and he, he's really kind of one of those those guys that we want to beat because he is the best so here is the team that wins the gold medal frank rommel started things off top of the tree in the men's skeleton competition sandra kiriasis second leg for women's bobsleigh yesterday beat kaylee humphreys by a hundredth of a second over two runs today she went 22 hundreds quicker than the canadian olympic champion to secure germany at the top spot in the table at the halfway mark anya huber former world champion and world cup winner and she put in another storming run she wasn't the fastest but she kept it as clean as she could to keep the Germans in the hunt with one leg to go. And then they played their third trump card. Francesco Friedrich, the junior world champion, smoking the field in the two-man bobsleigh to cement Germans' victory. Canada in second place with Canada one and the USA in third, ahead of Canada, Germany two and GB2. So three different teams in the top three positions, but from start to finish, Germany one was never headed. Well, temperatures are starting to drop from their zero degree midday high. There is the final classified result. Germany one, Canada one, USA one, the top three. Canada two, Germany two, and GB2 in sixth position. Welcome back to a beautiful evening in the Austrian Tyrol. We're at Innsbruck and the Olympic sliding track of Eagles after our World Cup teams competition. Germany won the victors over Canada 1 and US 1. Canada, Germany and Great Britain rounding out the top six after a fun competition that involved men and women's skeleton and men and women's bobsleigh. And the victory was started for Germany 1 by Frank Rommel. He was the fastest man in the men's skeleton competition. He earns himself 500 euro as a result. Well, after all the men's skeleton competitors had gone, it was time for women's bobsleigh. Yesterday, she ended a 23 and a half month drought by winning by a hundredth of a second over Canada's Kaylee Humphreys today 2200s quicker 
and Sandra Kyriasis earns her team 500 euro for the fastest run. That accolade does not go to former world champion Anya Huber, the 2008 queen of skeleton, couldn't manage to reach the top of the pile in the women's skeleton slides, but she kept Germany one in the frame. And then Francesco Friedrich and Gino Gerhardi. They're the junior world champions in two and four man, his first ever team competition. And he anchors it with the fastest run in the two man bobsleigh to seal Germany's victory and to mean that the German squad have got 1,500 squids to play with when they leave the track. So congratulations to them. Germany won our winners. Let's get down to the mayhem that is a, I don't know, 28-person podium. John Morgan, can you sort it out? I'm not sure I can. It's only 18 people, Martin, but down here in the uh, bronze, silver, and gold medal for the team competition. And Katie Ulander from the United States. Uh, things started to turn around for you guys when you came down. You guys had a big deficit, and you ended guys all won a bronze medal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I think there were a lot of variables that went into racing yesterday for me, and I was excited to come out and throw down and had a great team behind me, so with me. <laughs> a, little, a little bit like a 4x100? Four 4x100, by 100? Four by yes, definitely. I like this. It's uh, the it's just a really good similarity between this and, tra and the track and field event, so it's cool. Congratulations, America. Thank you. Now we got over to our... North American partners, Canadian Sarah Reed, same thing like Katie Ulander. Things started turning around for you uh, when you came down the track. Yeah, um, I had good runs today, and the team event is always so much fun. It's not very often that all of us get to hang out together and race together, so I think we all had a blast. Congratulations, Canada. Now over to Germany. Frank Rommel, your team performed as the best in all four disciplines. Yeah, it was a good job from everybody today, and we had a great race, and we won at the end. Good way to go into St. Moritz, Germany. Congratulations. Well, congratulations to Germany 1, to Canada 1, and to USA 1. Gold, silver, and bronze in the team competition here in Eagles in Austria. And fun, fun, fun. But as soon as the visor snaps shut, lots of speed on the ice as well. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks a lot to my cohorts, to Noel Pikes Pace, to Melissa Hollingsworth, to Nick Cunningham making his debut on FIBT TV. And of course, as ever, to the legend that is John Morgan. On behalf of everybody here, thanks to you for joining us here in Austria. Auf Wiedersehen and goodbye for now.